You know, every time something bad happens to you, and it's not always just a breakup, it could be uh, you finding out you had a serious disease, uh, and then you have uh, maybe someone died in your family, or something financially bad happens. There's seven stages most people go through, and basically, I'm going to talk about the stages of sh shock when you find out that you're, you're going to break up. And this really, really hurts a lot of people. I'm at the point now that if I break up with someone, I'm like, oh, who cares, whatever. I'm not going to sit there and mope around and cry. I'm just, I go from number one to number seven in about half a second. And like like Richard Pryor, you don't love me. No, you better not leave me. Yeah, okay. Oh, if if you walk out the door, you'll never see me again. You shan't. And the calmer a woman gets, the angrier a guy gets. So we're going to talk about the seven stages of grief and as how it applies to Nicole. So let's just get ready to talk about where she messed up and why she's messing up and how Danielle messed up and what they can do to fix their problems. I'm not a psychologist, but I... Hey, I lived overseas. I've seen some messed up stuff. People committing suicide. People, uh, girls getting pregnant with other guys' babies. And the guy still thinks it's his kid. But he's never had sex with her. <laughs> you tell me. All right, well, let's get it on. Get it on. The first stage of grief is shock, and this is when the initial news actually hits you, and you really don't know what to do. So, I mean, it's just like having a, a gold brick wrapped by a lemon peel smacked up against your head. So, I mean, it's that bad. So, you really like, well, what just happened here? And a lot of times this happens like um, in relationships where you find out that your spouse was cheating on you or they were never interested in you or they were just using you and you're just like, what, what just happened here? And you're just walking around like, I don't know what's going on. And so this actually happened with Nicole and Azan when Azan actually said, you were cheating on me. Hey, we all know Azan was cheating on Nicole too. It wasn't like... He was a little angel, so, hey, they were cheating on each other, everyone knows it, it was played out in the public, so what was the shock there, whoa, whoa, so, I think the shock to Nicole was the fact that uh, his visa was denied, and she was like, it will never be denied, this guy loves me, and everything's going to be all hunky-dory, and it's going to happen, and it got denied, and so now it would go to the next step and a lot of girls and guys they go overseas they marry someone overseas only for the fact and if you notice they go for poorer countries they don't go for rich countries they don't go over there and go to um uh Liechtenstein, which is one of the richest countries in the world or saudi arabia just someone making thirty thousand, looking for someone making a half a million they don't look for that they look for somebody who's poor and somebody who's desperate and somebody who also will fulfill their needs either it's sexual needs or it's financial needs and like for Danielle and Nicole it was probably both if you take a lot of guys that go overseas to live like in the Philippines or Thailand it's more of the first one and you'll see that all over the place there so when they find out that uh, they were being used it's shock like what what just happened here they got the carpet pulled out from underneath their legs they don't know what to do the second stage is is denial now they go through this stage here when they don't believe what just happened to them and they're like no this isn't true no this can't be true and basically nicole's going through this now because the post that she just put up on New Year's Day, and this one right here, says saying that her and Azan will keep going. 
is she's denying the fact that his visa was denied and he probably will not be able to come to the country. But it's going to go to the next step here. Uh, one of the next steps here in order for her to keep the relationship going. And a lot of guys, when their relationship ends, they either, uh, it doesn't end well with them. They, some commit suicide, some walk away, some go do something really dumb. And it's it's really bad. But a lot of times I've seen guys say, you know, your girlfriend's cheating on you. Nah, she wouldn't cheat on me. Here's pictures. Ah, she's not cheating. Come with me and I'll show you. Ah, she's not coming with me. And so, she, so the guy knows that the girl's cheating, but, well, just does not believe it. No matter what evidence you show, they do not believe it. So there's not, not a whole lot you can do to help a person at this stage, except keep trying to show them the truth. Okay, the next step we have is anger. And this is when you saw Danielle just go nutty nutcase nutter on Mohammed. Going down to Miami, throwing things at him. And at the divorce, going up to him saying, you had the worst mistake I've made in my life. And he come up and saying, do you know who this is? Yeah, what do you want? Your dick's going to fall off. And then saying, mom's have sex. Mom's have sex. That's the anger part of it. And Nicole has actually started doing this herself because she's now getting mad at fans who go out and contact her and saying, aren't you guys broken up? You guys should break up. And she's like, we aren't breaking up and we're going to be together forever and ever. <laughs> I don't care. I, I got to laugh every time I hear that. Uh, but anyway, so the anger part is the next one step. And we saw Danielle go through this a lot. Nicole's actually being very quiet and careful what she says. And I actually, I thought she was over it until she posted that post on New Year's. And I don't believe she's that over it. I think she's still in the denial stage. She hasn't gone on to the next step. And even uh, Danielle is in the anger section because she cannot go on and move away from <laughs> Mo Mohammed. I want to get his ass deported, but I'm going to miss him. Get a grip. God. So anyway, so this anger part can last a long time if they do not find a way to move on or go on to accept that the person's left. Like I said, that the Richard Pryor sketch when a guy, a woman leaves a guy and all the woman has to do is get calm and the guy gets angry. Just saying, you're leaving me. Yes. You know, if you leave me, you'll never see me again. You shan't. You know, but guys can also do the same thing to the woman back. Instead of getting angry, just do it back. My ex-wife, I'm leaving you. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just making sure it's not April Fool's. <laughs> you know, if you're leaving me, please, here's the door. No, really, I'm leaving you. Oh. I'll call you a taxi. You need a ride or anywhere? I mean, I'll just give you a ride. I mean, do you need an airplane ticket? I mean, just go. No, no, no. I, I, I'm leaving you. I heard you, but I, I just want to make sure you get to your destination. Please just go, okay? My lawyer will contact you, okay? You'll never see me again, okay? Just please leave. No, I'll stay. So, you know, you just got to get over the anger part. And Danielle, I don't think Danielle's even got over the anger part because she's stalking Mohammed. She's just crazy in the head. Now we have the bargaining part. Now you've seen this with uh, Nicole with her parents. Like, you know, uh, if you don't let me uh, go to Morocco, I'll, I'll just move there with May and you'll never see her again. So there's in a bargaining stage. And a lot of times when you break up with couple. One of the persons always going, please come back, please, I'll do whatever you want, just please, please come back to me, don't leave me, I, I can't live without you. Yes, you can. I'm, I'm living proof, just leave the person. They don't need to come back. Don't beg them back. I mean, I, I begged one girl back the last time. That was the last time. I'll never beg another girl back. Never. Never, 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 never. 
Anyway, so Danielle uh, is stalking Mohammed only so she can uh, try to get him back. And Mohammed's playing this to get what he wants from her. Like he wanted the divorce and not an annulment. And he would sweet talk her. And all he had to do was just say, hey, sexy mama. Danielle, what do you want? What do you want? Oh, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Huh? And so, and then uh, Danielle's trying to bargain with him. But now angry saying, I'm going to deport you. You do what I want. I'm going to deport you. And she just should have that like green card in her hand saying, green card over here, a phone over here. If you don't give me some what I want, I'm calling immigration on you. That's bargaining. And that's pretty much an angry person would do something like that. And so Nicole hasn't got into that part yet. And I think she's still in the denial stage. And I think that that's the big, big problem we have right now with Nicole. Is she's in the denial. Danielle's still in the angry stage. And she was in the bargaining. So... After the bargaining stage, you wind up getting into the depression stage. And this is something that Danielle's somewhat into. Because she's trying to get Mohammed back. She's always crying and playing the victim. Oh, I, I can find anybody else. Oh, oh, poor me. Oh, who cares? Anyway, so a lot of times people just sit there and mope around for weeks on end, months on end. And I learned a long time ago, it doesn't. You may as well just put your energy to something else. And Nicole, like, like I said, I don't think she's even made to pass the denial stage. So I think she got the shock and now she's in the denial stage where it's not going to happen. And I think that uh, soon when the, it starts to set in, she's going to start getting angry at the fans and start getting angry at everybody else. Then she's going to be angry at the show for putting her on TV and embarrassing her like that. And so... Um, it's really, I, this is the next step here, uh, depression. So they're going to be very upset and sad. And I think um, Danielle did this when she started stalking Mohammed. And I think Nicole is going to start doing that. And a lot of guys do that when they just break up with their wives or girlfriends or whatever. And then they move overseas. And what do they do? They start drinking a lot. And when they start drinking a lot, they party it up. And they don't really care. And and it's like, oh, look, the she did this to me and no you did it to yourself all you gotta do is move on just forget it happened lick your wounds and move on it's the best thing for you and some people just cannot do it some guys drink themselves silly some guys commit suicide don't even think about it your life's much better things <laughs> things will get better I promise you they will The next step is testing, and this is basically trying to find a way to get over your depression and get over the loss. And a lot of times, uh, like I said, the guys will go overseas and get drunk and try to uh, drink away their sorrows. But sometimes they wind up in the arms of a woman whose interests are not in their best interest. So Nicole and... Danielle, when they broke up with their other significant others, Nicole uh, had a boyfriend and got May, was May's father, and Danielle got a divorce, and they both went over to try to find a guy that was from a, I wouldn't say impoverished country, but guys that would marry them in order for to satisfy their needs, and what they did was. Uh, they tried to see if this would make them forget and if this would actually help them become a, in a better position in a few years. And it did not work for them. Danielle is now in the angry depression stage and Nicole is still in the uh, denial stage. So they need to start to move on and try to go into the testing stage what they can do to get over it and forget the person it took me three years to forget the girl i liked a lot and i found out that she got married and about a week later i said well there's no sense to worry about crying over or waiting for her because it's not going to happen stop looking for her, not going to happen so 
you got to accept it. If they can't accept it, they're going to be in the angry stage for a very, very long time. The last step is acceptance. So when you know that uh, no matter what you did or anything's going to happen, it's not going to change anything and you may as well accept that it's not going to happen. Like Danielle needs to accept the fact that Mohammed used her and he's not coming back. Nicole's got to understand that it's going to be a very rocky road to bring Azan to the States. It's going to cost a lot of money. And her little friend on Facebook who keeps supporting her and egging her on saying how much Azan is worth and if she should do this and she should do that. She needs to just move on and find someone in this United States that will look for her. I mean, granted, there are guys in the United States that like big women. But these guys who like the big women like the big women who clean the house and like the big women who can cook that biscuits and gravy. Ooh, boom, biscuits and gravy. Mm -mm, good. Get some sweet potato pie. If you can't make some sweet potato pie and some biscuits and gravy, just forget it. Just forget it. Keep that house clean. Keep me warm in the winter and sweet potato pie. That's all I ask. Break me a piece of that sweet potato pie. And so they need to accept the fact that it's not coming back and everything is over. A lot of guys, like I said, like David, David got married and came back. And now he's at the part where he's like, oh, boy, I screwed up. I, I have to accept all the mistakes I made. I regret it. Now what do I have to do to fix it? And that's the testing part. David now needs to go into the acceptance part where I have a daughter that has a big problem with me and I need to fix this problem. And he needs to find a way to fix it. Nicole needs to find a way to fix herself and Danielle needs to find a way to fix herself. And the only way they're going to fix themselves are to find someone else or find a solution to their problem. And the solution to like David's problem is to try to find a good paying job, even job at McDonald's. Maybe you should call Larry up and then they should, can, uh, they can um, work it out, get a job. Danielle needs to go talk to George Glass and, uh, you know, maybe she can steal him away from Jan Brady. And Nicole just needs to move on. There's plenty of guys that come into Starbucks every day that she can try to hit on and try to work on. She can go out on the weekends. She can do whatever she wants. Stop hanging around Disneyland. And she will find out that, whoa, this was so much easier. And it was... And she got to stop looking for love in all the wrong places and find out that love was there all the time.